just turn that off altogether. I should have had it off, really. <coughs> no. Hi. Day one, first demonstration. That's Lily. And there's a group here. And we're going to do about 20 minutes, hopefully now. Okay, so let's see. Here she is. And I've chosen to have hair just on one side. Look at the back. On this side. I think it looks good from every angle when there's hair just on one when the hair is just on one side. And I'm going to put it behind your ear. Focus on something, and then we're going to start. It's, I'm taking the time to set up and start looking at you, and I'd recommend that you all do this as well. When Lily's sitting there and you're at your easel, begin by looking at Lily and considering the space that she'll occupy on your paper, and then look back again and see what's the first thing I want to do. You know, you'll kind of find your way in gradually. But then, Lily was saying there, Mother, take your time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I reckon it's helpful too for me to see in terms of, of shapes, ge geometric shapes. And I feel like Lily's face is almost like a triangle from the ear up to the forehead and down to the chin. You could call it an equilateral triangle almost. Is that too bright, love? Is it okay? Okay, we'll start off away from it and hopefully we can tune it out. Yeah. If you were in my repeat hat, it might be quite nice to talk about it. Good, but how about you? <coughs> oh yeah, good. All right. So 20 minutes from now. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to start by making colour to explain the uh, Lily's hair at the back. So I'm using the ultramarine blue and some Van Dyke brown. So the Van Dyke brown looks like that. It's really quite a dark brown, depending on the brand you have. I've got um I don't know how to I've got the dark brown one myself, so if you want to borrow the very dark Van Dyke brown, um you're welcome to. Okay. And the blue. Get a duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vociferous duck up there. And I put a touch of the alizarin crimson into it because I felt it needed to be kind of warmed up or cooled down or something reddish going in it seemed to me to work there. And I'm holding the palette vertically so that I can see how the colour behaves. You know, I know that it's not so runny that it's going to create a pool down there. But it's got enough fluidity that my brush isn't separating at the edge here. Um, it's not that you're having to think of it. It will become unconscious after a while, like driving a car, you know. But for a while, um, it's helpful to notice. And the other reason that I would hold the palette vertical like that is that I can see the colour that I'm aiming for as I'm making it. Okay. Now I know I want to make some big moves, so I'm making it wetter. I want to know that, I, that when I put the paint on, it'll spread freely. And I want to make enough of an impact that I'll see it, because it's really the darkest part that I'm looking at. So I'm putting more color, more water, more pigment in there. More pressure. <laughs> Let's see now. And I put a little bit of alizarin into it, didn't I? I don't know if that is alizarin. It's something like it, anyway. Yeah, 
Okay. And then it's really the direction where the hair meets the light on the temple. That's the move I'm aiming to make first, I think. Let's see now. Hmm. Yeah. And I'm looking at the shape that that looking at the shape that that um, piece of hair is, the width and the height of the, the dark bit where it meets her face, and then as it becomes a little bit, it's a bit closer to vertical back here, I'm making a massive head, aren't I? But it's all right, I think. We'll see. We'll see once I get there with that. Let's see now. I might put the other little triangle on the other side, just so that I've got an idea of the size of, of Lily's face there. It is, it looks like it will be bigger than life size. And that's all right. It's kind of fun to try things out that you've not tried before. You know, if you're familiar with using the paint like this, now you want to maybe push yourself a little bit so that you've got an edge of, uh, <laughs> am I gonna be okay? <laughs> and if you're doing it for the first time this way, of course, there'd be enough variables anyway to keep you on your toes, I think. Because then, um, what am I doing here now? I'm putting some red, you see, there's viridian green then to go into the red to deepen it. So I moved, uh, I used a little bit more red than I planned to there. So the green is kind of knocking out the brightness of the red a bit for me. And um, I want to capture you know, the, the sweep upwards at the back there. And I think what I might do is actually pull the, I might pull the brush up. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to see where it's almost as though the shoulder is a continuation of the, where the hair meets the where the hair meets the face there. If I were to continue that line, it's almost as though it lands where the um, where the shoulder stops and the hair starts behind it. Um, I think anyway. Yeah. Let's see now. I think I could maybe some. A bit of burnt sienna then. I know I'm putting tons of colours in on top of each other. It's probably not recommended at all. Like, so you can clean it out yourself if you want to, you know. But for me at the moment, I feel like it's more important that I just keep moving and find the position of things. So the hair at the front has got a light cast in it and it's warming, it's warm, warmed up a little bit. <clears throat> It's probably going to go about there, I'd say. And I'm kind of comparing things to the horizontal. How much does the, the top of the head veer off the horizontal? Where, where is the highest point of the, the crown? Um, <clears throat> and this brush is helpful because it allows me to print an edge and fill in an area without too much um, labour. Like I'm holding it lightly, but it's got a big shape so I'm able to feel like I can move and uh, do big things with it. <coughs> I just wanted to bring a bit more brightness into that bit there. <coughs> I have to cough away now. That's it. <coughs> The, uh, the burnt sienna look at the end, then I. <clears throat> to be honest, I think some conacridine gold got into the, the, but I've got some in my other, if anyone wants to try it, that's quite a nice colour. I've been talking a few wild cards and, okay. All right, so I've got some idea of the position of the hair. And I feel, I feel like you're, you're mainly wanting to keep yourself, as, as I say, kind of barely, you know, on the edge of something being lost, you know. Um, but the thing that will anchor you is your your ob observation. I feel like it, being attentive to what's there will bring you back always. Keep that as your, I, at least with this way of working, I think um, anchoring yourself in what's there and trying to, if you feel that you're losing yourself, come back and just be steady yourself and just look. What actually is that shape there? How high is it in relation to the width? What's the relationship between that angle and 
that angle back there. And, and draw out and see the general. Okay, so when I do that, the next thing I want to do, uh, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to clean that out. And when I half close my eyes, I feel like the, um, the shadows in the face might be helpful now to explain where the cast, well, it's not a cast shadow, is it? It's beneath the cheekbone. So there's a brightness above from the cheek to the top of the forehead. You could call that a triangle almost from my angle. You know, this just bright area here. Do you get me? And feel free to move anywhere if you want. Um, I was just talking about the, the triangle of light that's there, you know. And you could even call the whole face a triangle from here. So looking at the big triangle, it's as though the small triangle is about half of it, but it's more a square that's down here, isn't it? So we've got a triangle. I mean, it's just kind of computing in my head, like to try and find some order for myself. And you have your own, you have your own kind of way of finding order. But I do think it's helpful to see in terms of, to simplify down best you can in terms of shape and to see the shape of the brightness and the shape of the darks. And the other thing that can be very helpful too is to look at any verticals in the background and see how much does the face veer off the vertical. And actually from Lily's forehead to her chin, it's almost along the same line. The chin is maybe uh, sitting back a little bit more. Now it's, yeah, it's a tiny bit forward. We'll see, but it's kind of helpful to consider the relationship between the edge of the face and the verticals in the background. So I'm going to make a colour now to represent the shadows on the skin. Um, and I think I'll start with cadmium red. Cadmium red and um, the sap green, that's usually my kind of go-to colours if I don't know what else to use those two together. So that's the cadmium red and that's the sap green there. I'll go around and see you as you're working as well and kind of make suggestions as to how, how you might start and things. Um, uh, so what was I saying there now? So the cadmium red and sap green. And I think that's a good enough colour to begin with to describe where the chin, sorry, where the cheek stops being dark and, and, um, <coughs> and begins to be brighter. You know, the line of, there's a, a kind of a brightness at the top of the cheekbone where it's catching the light. And that's parallel to the line of the jaw. So I'm going to find now the line of the jaw and consider where that would be in relation to, to the head. Um, just best I can, like you're kind of having to flounder a bit, like and find your way gradually. So nothing is really set in stone. And it's possible too, as we know, if you've been before, you know that it's possible to lift off some of these colors, especially some of them are be a lot easier than others to lift off, but you can make adjustments after a thing has dried even. Um, you know, it's possible to retrieve, retrieve the light. So don't worry too much. Um, at the same time, you don't want to be putting on really dominant color that's going to soak in. So this, this is why the, the, you know, the line of the jaw there is barely explained, but, but I can see it. And you want to be able to see it when you stand back so that you know how approximate, you know, how close you are to it. And then there's a slight incline. And again, I'm kind of looking at it in terms of where the hair up here is. Um, maybe where the little dent, let me see now, where the dent would be for the eye on that side. There might be a little C-shape. I put an, an extra touch where I didn't mean it to go. You can see kind of a backward C shape to explain where the nose stops and the eye socket beyond it begins. And so the line of the, the nose might extend kind of in that direction generally, um, I think. You know, so I'm kind of trying to find stepping stones as we go. And noticing too where the neck would extend, if we were to continue the line of the neck, where it would enter and exit the rest of the face. So the line of the neck is the low, is the point at which the chin stops going that way and starts going that way as well. Or maybe it's slightly in front of it. Anyway, I could explain that a bit more clearly by putting in hair colour there because that's what I see underneath the chin is the colour of her hair. So I'm mixing some brown and blue together in order 
to make color that I'm seeing here. Ultramarine blue and banded from just to kind of I'm fairly sure. I shouldn't say that really, but I, I, I feel like that's not bad for the position of position of the neck there. Yeah, and then there's a kind of an arc. We get a different colour. You want to be every so often giving yourself a bit of a break, like, and doing something that's not critical, you know. So, um, every so often not notice when something catches your eye and makes you feel excited, because then you can, then you can maybe give yourself a bit of. I can happen to this day the blue sea. You'd have to do that before now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at that blue. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, um, but I've kind of been trying more at the moment to paint the blue that's over there. I mean, it was really just to kind of give myself a bit of a light relief, like it's something like that. And you can always, you know, you might want to turn, sorry, you might want to turn the paper on its side and um, like I've often said before, make chance essential. You know, do something that will um, that you're not in complete control of. I don't know where that needs to be really. You know, Paul Paul Cleese said, "Make chance essential." Keeps you kind of on, on, in unknown territory, and it is an unknown adventure. Really, moving every move is kind of try that, try that, and then step back. So you keep yourself alive. Fencing with the easel or not. <coughs> okay. And I feel like it's a good idea to see things on their head and turned upside down and you know maybe maybe it is no harm actually, but something there now is what seems it's it's available and it's and it's that colour. Okay. Well, how are we for time, Sheila? What's the story? You have six <coughs> six minutes left. Okay, that's all right. So uh, maybe now I'm going to begin to, well, we could bring some of that up a little bit closer because it kind of, it goes around the back there, doesn't it? There's something quite nice about the scoop. Um, and then there'll be, of course, there'll be, sh there'll be kind of shoulder here as well, like, I'll just explain that a little bit lightly, just for myself. This is not too heavy today. Although your show, your yeah, Lily's arms are resting on the arms of the chair, so we can see if we want that in when when you begin to paint. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Okay. So I think maybe maybe no harm. Put out a little bit more of this shape here. Do that because this here is then skin that's in front. That's going to be skin there, and I think it'll cause there to feel like a, you know a bit more of an elongated kind of thing because of her shoulders resting a little bit higher, being on the arms of the chair. I think it's helpful then to have the the skin on the neck extending in an elegant way up and in. But it's too wet to put any skin color on there just now, so I'm going to revisit the face with my cadmium red and uh, sacrum. So let's see what they do next now here. I'm noticing that the left eyebrow, as I look at Lily, is higher than the eyebrow on the right hand side. And this one is almost um, horizontally leaning across into the space between the eyebrow and the eye, and the other side is pointing over. So this is going to go um, horizontal there for a while. Maybe make it a little bit lighter. And then there's the second leg of the eyebrow that um, goes in that direction, kind of goes back like that. And the turn of the eyebrow sits almost above the neck, you know, the point at which the eyebrow stops going that way and starts going that way. So it's a helpful thing to look at the two directions of the eyebrow and the relationship between the eyebrows. And after that then, I mean, I wouldn't work at it for too long, I'd kind of move on. Um, after that, then I move down to the shadow beneath the nose, cast by the nose. Let's see. I want to further explain the shape of this shadow that's in here. 
and there's a band of there's a band of light running between you guys on the bridge of the nose. And um, I think at the moment I don't want to do anything at the edge of the nose, okay. only to explain the underside of the spherical end of the nose maybe with something. And uh, it's higher at the tip. And then there's the cast shadow here that comes up to meet it, so it's almost kind of horizontal. And I think I'll stick with that brush. You want to use the brush that's the um, that's it ever so slightly bigger than what you want rather than smaller than what you want really. So smaller than the part you're explaining. Um, and the back of the nostril there. Like when I half close my eyes now, all of that is kind of in shadow. The cast shadow of the nose onto the skin below it is helpful. Might look a little bit strange for a wee while now until I do something to, to explain the upper lip which is also in that shadow. So we're going to find the corner of the mouth. Um, as it extends out, we're making this a little bit more warm, the, the lip color, so that it reads as different from the color of the, the cast shadow on the skin there. Um, yeah. And I think there's some warmth too in the cheek here as it comes over. And of course there'll be shadow in the uh, there'll be shadow in the socket of the eye. I'm going to put a bit more green into the reddish colour there in order to explain the shadow. And I'm going to push the eyebrow up a little bit. I think that eyebrow needed to lift a little bit higher. So I'll just press it in and push it up. Um, do you know, I never said to you that if you wanted to ask any questions or anything like that, feel free. Maybe a bit late, don't be saying that. You, you can talk like, um, okay. <coughs> but when I half close my eyes again, you can kind of forget really that it's a, a face that you're painting at all and just see in terms of, of light and dark at this point. And of course, you're not going to be making it really um, significantly dark. But one, one layer of, of colour is enough to let us know that that's in shadow. You know, one little layer of colour. And then you might adjust the shape of the shadow according to the part you're painting. Like the hard edge on the eyebrow is helpful for me here because it shows me where the eyebrow stop, the light on the forehead begins. Here I didn't really want the hard edge so much. And I think it might be an opportunity to explain too the lifting off thing because I want to take off a bit of the light here. I want to retrieve some light there, I think, on the cheekbone. Just to make that a bit brighter. I think it maybe happens down a bit lower. The brightness there. And also I might lift off a little bit here so the nose is extending a little bit further down too. I mean it didn't really come off really well there, did it? But it's enough for me. And this is these are all like as you move on, you can you can put oh that's my thing. As you move on, you can you can emphasize parts with really you know you're working up to the dark like you can make it quite dark in places, and that makes sense of things underneath mm -hmm. that might be finding marks where you're floundering <coughs> kind of your way. Don't worry about that. Like having things that extend beyond the edge of stuff is appealing. We are alive ourselves. Our bodies are moving beyond ourselves. We you know it's not all stopping at the skin. So I think it's okay for there to be a bit of flux at the edge, which you can harness in when you. You know, every time you look, you're looking freshly. And then you'll be able to find the spot that will really position the eye for you. But you don't have to feel like you get need to get it right first time. You know, it's not set in stone that way. Oh, shit. Yeah. Can I have just another minute? Let, oh, look at her. She's ready to <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. What happened last night? Did you, did you stay up here as late or something? Or? Can you just sit up for one second? I'm going to do your chin so that I can have one final thing. Is that okay? Not really. It's not really okay, is it? Well, what I was going to... Well, is, is it? Do you, is it alright for one more minute? You can say no. It is actually one minute. It is actually... Okay. <laughs> Could someone say it and it's a minute? Sorry, she went, oh, what a pain in here. I can even look at it there. Look, 24.47. 25.47 is stop. Okay, ready? Brilliant. So a little bit more of the green into it than the red to explain the shadow that sits beneath the lower lip there. 
No, it's not as though the upper lip has got a huge amount of light on it, but there's, or sorry, the lower lip has a huge amount of light on it, but there's some light there. And I think it's helpful to find some sort of shadow in the cavity where the, where the uh, chin sits back before it extends out again for the, um, where it extends out again for the, the bottom of the chin. Um, yeah. And of course, when that's dry, you'll be able to, there's a little bit of light on the other side of the face there as well. And when that's dry, you'll be able to adjust it, um, adjust it more. I had a bit of turquoise on my finger or something there, and it ended up extending into the, going onto the paper. Which is out. Okay, Lily, that's your minute. <laughs> right, so, you can have a, have a break. Okay. <clears throat> I think that's kind of, that's all right. I mean, really, there's things to change there, but, um, we could even push the mouth down later on. Now, maybe if if it if you're up for a second demonstration after you've made a start, mm -hmm. we can after lunch or something we could do another little bit about um how to mm -hmm. adjust things after they're placed down and it's not the end of the world if things aren't. You know, I'm showing you what not to do here a little bit as well. <laughs> I know I'm not. Uh, actually, uh, more just saying that it's okay. It's all right. You know, you've got permission here to do whatever it is that you you try and get your teeth into things best you can. And it's for you, it's for no one else. So don't feel like you're having to <coughs> perform in some way that's kind of amazing. Just see about finding how to work with these materials and play a little bit and softness in the belly, softness in the muscles of the face, all of that stuff. Well, you're finished, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's all. I think that's all. So we take maybe f five minutes, Lundy, you can have a coffee. I never encourage my children to drink coffee, but <laughs> maybe today. Anyway, so thanks very much for your attention. Thank you. And here too, thanks.